here. What's up, everybody? It's your favorite hero who also speaks nonsense, favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the masterpiece Megatron. Hopefully now you guys see there was a little bit of method to my madness with putting this out a, a little later in the game because I wanted to do that evolution of the MP line prior to this so that we could use that information as a baseline to go to here. A lot of people have been asking me about this. A lot of people. A lot of PMs about when it's coming. So here it is. There's a number of concerns I have with this right out of the box and from, from kind of the scuttlebutt I'm hearing. So we're gonna talk about that kind of as we go along and we're gonna dive as deep as we can into this. But I am concerned about how long this video is going to be, so I'm not going to have that long of an introduction. That being said, let's get to accessories. We'll start with the fusion cannon and it's his signature weapon, right? It does uh, have electronic features and there's a button here to activate that. You guys know I don't do that. So if you want that uh, information, then look elsewhere. But that's where the, the batteries go in. It has this like, I, I don't believe it's paint. I think it's just like this metallic, like plastic, like this that flecked plastic type finish, which does look great. And I actually wish uh, they would use it uh, on the figure a bit more than they do, but we'll talk about that as well. Uh, it extends, as you just saw, and collapses. And the reason why I say I wish they would use it on the figure, and this is going to be, a, I think, a reoccurring theme here, is because where it goes onto the arm, it has already scratched paint off there and on the opposite side in the same location. And that's with one time putting it on and one time removing it. Of course, the Fusion Cannon can also lock on to there. He comes with all of his, like, remember that thing from that episode or that movie weapons, and that's cool. M most of it, or I guess it's 50-50, right? Well, whatever. 66-33. So the, the lightsaber that he used in, in the movie, and it, this bit unplugs. We had, It's a gray plastic, so it's all got paint on it, the whole thing. And then this top bit there, uh, you can't see that, can you? And then this top bit here is a lighter purple. And, of course, it plugs in a typical masterpiece way. So we have that. And then, of course, the translucent piece, which can go into it. And I like this little, like, bulb of energy at the bottom. I don't think a lot of people would have done that. I think it's a smart way to do it. Uh, the good news is it can also plug into the barrel of the gun. So it can be, like, you know, pew-pewing at you. And that's cool as well. The gun itself uses those same types of colors from... Uh, well, actually, they're, it's the, maybe it's this color that's the same. So I, I would suspect the whole thing is painted, which is nice. And it's a great sculpt. It looks dead on the money. Plugs in the same way. And as you can see, he holds those with no problem. Even with the trigger in the trigger space there, the finger in the trigger space, like with this. I, I don't know if the real, in the, in the movie or not, if this was a, a full trigger guard or not. Uh, if so, I mean, it's kind of a cheat, but it's still a clever cheat, so let's give him credit for it. We have the uh, that thing from that episode with the loose chain so that it can be, um, you know, it can be posed like he's just holding it with some weight. And then you can also remove that and plug this into you know, and this into you know, and then you can adjust this and you can be swinging it and you can use all of these hinges and the swivels at both ends obviously one two three four hinges to to use it any way you want it's really quite clever I would have preferred this been a little bit deeper of a translucent or maybe even painted because I don't like seeing all the the plug-in bits it's definitely a subjective thing, but I think most people would agree that seeing this in hand, uh, it, it would have looked better with some sort of full color uh, pattern sort of applied to it. As for the mace, you have to take the hand and remove it, uh, which I would have preferred. The hand has to flip in anyway, so I would have preferred if they had a better way to have gone about that and then insert you know, the mace, and then you're fine. Uh, which, I mean, ultimately, it's okay, right? But, uh, you know, just I think we've seen it done better, personally. We get three different face sculpts. We get the battered and damaged face sculpt with the tears and the cracks and all that stuff. It's beautiful. If you look at the back, you can see the base plastic, which I think like the, this has a glossy finish on the other side because this looks a little bit flatter on the opposite side. And then you have the silver paint red paint black paint obviously black paint inside or it's like maybe it might even be a dark gray inside the mouth i can't exactly tell it looks black actually to me and then a lighter gray for like the you know the liquid coming down his face i'm not going to say their tears because it's megatron but you know what i mean so we get that face and then we get the 
uh, like angry screaming face and then like the happy go lucky face. Hey, and we'll show how those go on. It's relatively simple. You just pop out that and then it has this like it's very close, you know, if not identical to the scan that Unicron does during the movie. With that, that's a nice touch. They didn't have to do it and they did it. A really nice touch. We're going to use the uh, damaged face because, well, we'll talk about that later. But there we go. And then we also get the sort of beat up after the fight chest. Another smart idea. Done really well in the same type of paint apps. The Decepticon symbol is all destroyed. Really clever stuff. We got uh, the same sort of uh, stuff that's on the other one. So we'll go ahead and talk about it now. The translucent pieces on top of this silver paint underneath and then this darker silver paint underneath. And it looks really good. Easy to get on, but not entirely without issue. You have to raise this up. This whole piece has a tendency to come with it in order to slide that up. Once again, little detailings and stuff. They didn't have to do that. And then you want to catch that in those grooves there and there. How Megatron got his groove back, you know what I mean? And then he's all beat up. We have his helmet. Really nicely done as well. Nice paint application pretty much throughout. I think that the lighter purple is the base color plastic and the darker purple is painted on. This like bluish purple is painted. Actually, this is like a purple too. It's just not showing up that way on the camera. The yellow, the silver, the grays, all that stuff is painted. Looks really good. And this obviously goes on his head. There you go, Spaceman. And then we have the key to Vector Sigma. It's die cast. That's a nice touch. And it's got this metallic gold uh, paint throughout. Looks really good. Really clever. And he just holds it in his hand with, uh, I'm guessing, with just gravity. But I will take a look and see if this interlocks in his hand. Negative. Just with friction. But... Uh, if you put it this way where it's vertical, he holds it a lot better because these those two notches on the side will kind of rest on his fingertips and uh, you should have an easier time because otherwise it's a tendency to do that. But but really cool accessory. And then we have this classic accessory. Obviously, it's for the gun mostly. We'll show that here in a second. But it can also be used as a display stage. So you open up the bottom pieces. They're die cast. It all has that same metallic fleck finish. It's not a paint, but it's like, a, at least it doesn't feel like one, but it's the type of plastic. It ratchets at the base. It ratchets at the first knuckle there. This piece up here spins on a ratchet. And then in order to get the display stage option, you just press that button in and flip this piece out. It's just not the easiest thing to do, but the peg is up in there and then this piece kind of clips around and there it is. I made it look easy, but now let's see if I can get it out. It's just, it's just a little bit challenging. So I got it. It's a little challenging uh, to get it in. It's even more challenging to get out for me, but uh, it's in there now and I was having a grand old time. It's a really cool option uh, and smart usage of this. And you should be able to connect that by sliding it here. Make sure that the skinnier rectangle is at the top and the fatter one is at the bottom. But that's not all you can do with this. You can take this and insert the fusion cannon a fair bit. Take this piece and spin it around. Take your silencer. Yes, it has the orange cap. Yes, we will talk about it. It hinges here. You can open this around. You'll see the groove and you can plug that in and then lastly you can take these two sidebars out and around and he has his little cannon mount and of course the silencer can come on to the barrel now I'm not pushing it any further than this because I've heard too many rumors of paint scratching and I can see where the friction is being caused but it will go, and if it's that important to you, it's a $230 piece, Mac. It's not that important to me. It will go all the way. One of the last things you can do is pull this down and sort of spin this around to the outside, and that will allow you to take this piece and once again fold it and then insert it because we need this uh, notch to that side right yeah and I'm very hesitant to put this on 
because I don't want any paint wear. So I'm just going to leave it sit right there. Oof. And then he has this on the other side. And then you can take his fusion cannon and slap it on here. And then he has the barrel gun on his face, which is like some G1 Japanese toy homage, which is, you know, has its place in history, but ultimately doesn't mean anything to me. But it's cool that they included it. And the safety tips, which don't come with all uh, of these releases. I think it's just the ones that are going to major American retailers, I believe. I don't know. It's funny that we're kind of like we have a gun culture here, and yet we're so concerned about gun toys. Just seems weird to me. Doesn't matter. It's not a political discussion I feel like getting involved in at the moment. Uh, but it does have these. I haven't tried to remove this cap. Ultimately, I don't care because I won't be using this piece. This piece I obviously do care about, and I was able to pull it right out of here there is some glue residue if you can focus you can see it even though it's unfocused i think but there is some glue residue in there from where it was glued so it definitely is glued but it doesn't sit in there flush it sits in there like about here so you can get a grip on it to pull it out so there's that silver lining and at last we can do what i've always wanted to do which is talk about the figure so the head is on a ball peg um, I'm very forgiving of Megatron articulation because of what it has to do. So I think that a ball peg with this little bit of neck sculpting they did underneath is ultimately okay, just not preferred. And it might be, Megatron might be one of the few robots that does need more uh, emoting ability with the head, more angles and such. So I'm okay with it. I think it looks good. The silver paint looks great throughout. It's everywhere. It's on the thighs, it's on the arms, it's on the head, it's on the chest, it's everywhere. Everywhere. And it looks great. Uh, I think that the, the, the concerns that I have uh, are about what I keep hearing rumor-wise as to the wear on the paint. Which is why I'm going to transform this thing for the first time on camera when we go to transform it and then we're going to take a look at one what one transformation process does to it so i don't know whether it'll be good or bad yet and i'm going to try to be as dainty as possible with the old god can you imagine if I, that's a big hand i had to put on somebody anyway so the paint looks great i almost lost lost my cool there for a second but it looks really good all right, all these detailings down in here, this translucent plastic use and so forth for the red and the blue and the yellow, it looks incredible. I wouldn't have thought that translucence would have been the way to go here, and I have to admit I would have been wrong. This looks great. Silver paint, red paint on the chest, that all works. You get a waist swivel as well, and you get an ab crunch, a significant ab crunch. You only really get it when he's facing forward. You can't really articulate, use the waist swivel and get it. You can get a little bit, but not much. Uh, but I think that that's still cool. For the shoulders, you get a butterfly joint out to about there, which is nice. And then you get the hinge to 90 degrees, and you get the swivel. The hinge and swivel are both ratcheted. So the universal works ratcheted, and then the butterfly joint is, is just uh, with, a, with a regular hinge. But it still is, is great. It works really well. Bicep swivel. Elbow looks a little weird. The sculpt looks a little weird, but the range is great. No issues there. It does look strange, but I think from most angles, it won't bother you in the least. Wrist swivel, and the fingers are on a base pin knuckle. The index finger is completely separate, and then the second knuckle is articulated as well. So that's separate for the index, and then the same for the, uh, the bottom three digits. And then the thumb is actually on a hinge as well, which is uh, a little strange, but I don't hate it. I don't hate it at all. And then the same for the other side. Sculpt work and stuff looks good. You know, it's definitely along the more simple lines, but we have a little bit of panel work down in here. We'll talk about that later. All right. So these hip skirts, they get out of the way. They look good. I, I, I thought in pictures and stuff, they looked a little big in, in hand. They don't bother me at all. You can get them out of the way. These are on a weird angle, but you can get them out of the way as well. The tolerance on these is a little strange, and it, it feels a little dangerous. I'm not even going to force that one. Oof. That doesn't feel good. This one doesn't feel good. This one feels a little bit better, but there is still a point that you reach where uh, it's, it's like a, a moment of truth. Do you know what I mean? But it, this one ultimately gave. This one is feeling a little bit more ornery, so we're going to use this one. 
We'll show the, we'll show the articulation of both. So with, if you get the full range, you can get the foot way up, like he's in a Broadway show. That's ratcheted forward, frictioned out to the side. Not the best. Uh oh. Got a little squeaky squeak. Maybe Fans Toys was involved here. And then we'll flip this down. So for this one, with it just out to this first sort of stopping point, we'll call it, you still get it to just about 90 degrees. So I wouldn't go beyond this uh, just for the sake of keeping the structural integrity of this piece. I wouldn't go beyond that. I'm dumb enough to do it, but you shouldn't do it. And then out to here. And that one holds a little bit better, but it's still not great. Oh, a little squeak there too. A little bit lower octave of a squeak, but it's definitely there. And, and that piece came undone. Okay, so we got a we got a single jointed knee. Is that right? Yep, single jointed knee, but it has a great range on it, so no issues there. Once again, we have this paint finish here with the same sort of um, metallic paint. Oh man, these allergies. Hold on. <coughs> Good grief, man. Seasons, you know what I mean? So we have this this great uh, metallic paint, and this metallic paint here oh, is beautiful. Like the, the the metallic plastic, the metallic paints, it's really like the deco of this is incredible. It's really, it's breathtaking. I'm, I gotta admit it. All right. So no articulation there though, which is fine. Ankle tilt, you get up to there. You get down, maybe one click. They are ratcheted. Uh, and then an ankle rocker. Nothing out this way, but you won't need that anyway. And as much as you'd want on the other side. So that all works really well, and the feet are die cast. The back of the figure, we got to have that discussion, right? All right, so let's have a good look. Because this, a, 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 this is a topic of controversy. That, that looks, all right. So the, the bottom doesn't look too bad, right? Up there, it does look like a hot mess. I agree. Um, you know, the old adage, like, you know, who looks at their figures from behind and all that stuff. And I've, I've heard it all and I get it. I do. Uh, but that doesn't look great. And I, so I have two, two schools of thought about this, right? One is that I don't look at my figures from the back. So ultimately it's fine, which is how I'm going to end up rolling. My other train of thought is that I'm spending $230. We'll talk about the price in a minute. Don't type in the comments that it's 180 bucks. I know where you're coming from. We'll talk about it at the end. Save your comments until then. So the reason why I say that is because uh, at 200 bucks, let's say 200, we'll, we'll make it an even 200. Uh, I, I feel like to expect more is not unreasonable. That being said, I'm okay with it, but I don't feel like it's ridiculous to expect more. I feel like that is uh, okay. It is okay at a figure for this price point to expect more. But uh, from the front and the action figure element of this guy, I'd say it's pretty much perfect. And size comparison wise, there he is with Optimus Prime and Starscream. And I think it looks great. No. We're going to start the transformation. Let me say this. I am not the best reviewer for transformations. If it was up to me, I wouldn't even do them. I kind of think that a review should be a review and not a tutorial, but I know people expect them. I know a lot of people use them, so I choose to do them. That being said, I'm sure that people like um, T2RX6 or Pig for Life or who's a, a bro man, you know, they do great transformation videos. If you want a transformation video, you know, they might be the better option, but I'm going to do what I can here. And my goal is really to see the effect that the transformation has on the figure as a first time use. That's, that's that's my main goal in in going through this. I'm also going to see if you can do this. I don't know if anyone has tried to do it yet. Uh, I, I've been looking at it, and I can't necessarily see why it wouldn't work. But I'm going to see if you can do the transformation with the altered pieces. So if you're going to cause damage to one of those, at least it's not a piece you would use regularly in display mode. I'm not sure if that's possible. We'll find out. That being said. Let's giddy up. So we're going to open this piece up here on the back. What we really need to do is flip this piece down and we need to get this piece out and spin it around and face it the other way because this makes the side body of the, of the weapon. We'll flip the gun barrel down and we'll do the same on this side. And these pieces will eventually come up. For the chest, 
we want to spin this. I'm looking at the uh, directions as I'm, uh, maybe I'm already, and there we go. This is on a double hinge here and here. And I'm not sure that it's, oh, cause this has to go the other way. So I just messed that up. So, so we're off to a great start is kind of what I'm saying. There we go. So it seems to fit. So that's a good thing. Let's see. Uh, this stuff needs to come out here and down. And we'll do the same on this side. And down. And then this all oh, curls around and interlocks. So we're not doing too bad so far. We'll twist this. We got to get the uh, arms out of the way. We might need to go back. Let's see. Yeah. We'll get the arms out of the way. And then in order for me to get my big digits up in here, we're going to twist this around just to give me a little bit of room and fold that up in there. Not too bad so far. And actually, it probably would have been better if I used the ab crunch. Open this flap in here. It seems like to me the instructions have the thumb on the outside of the hand, but I feel like it fits in there better when the thumb is pressed down a little bit. I don't know. On the back, you wanna pull this piece out in a way, and then this piece has to come around and fill in to make that, that, that piece complete. On the opposite side, make sure you take the hammer and tuck it in. All right, so I went through that kind of painstaking because the instructions are difficult for me to kind of get, but this part here, right? So this panel and this panel need to be in the same alignment, which is a little tricky, but if you close this down, it'll give you kind of a guide to keep this in line, and then you just manipulate this shoulder as you need to uh, to kind of get it. That ought to do it. And I can tell you that little clip in there, and look at all that paint rub. That little clip in there, that that's an uneasy piece of engineering. Like it doesn't make you feel good. It feels like you're gonna break it. So then close that up and uh, make sure that this is turned around this way. I think I've already turned it around, but whatever. That's what you want. And then we wanna do the same thing on the other side. So we're gonna open this up. We're gonna put this thumb in, even then the instructions don't have it that way. I just feel like it sits a little bit better. And then close these fingers around it. And we want the thumb to be facing up. All right, and then the same thing for the upper shoulder. Flip the piece. Ooh, did I just break it, please? Uh, you want this piece to flip out. Yikes, smack. All right, and then you close this up. Use this once again for a guide. And just sort of do what you gotta do in order to get the clearance to line that up. We'll tuck the hammer in. And then we're gonna close this around. Once again, we're gonna take great care because this is not a good feel. There. Spin the arm around so that this all lines up, collapse, and then this piece comes around, and this piece comes around. And then lastly, we just kind of want to get the shoulders uh, lined up the best we can, you know, so that this line stays right, and then the, the arms are kind of done for the time being. And now we're gonna flip this section over top of his head. Make sure his head is lined up the best we can right now. So that his head fits in there. And then these pieces have to come and tab in to the sides here. And I got a feeling that this is gonna eat me alive. Uh, 
Like this piece down here being on a separate, let's see. There we go. That wasn't too bad. And then this has to come around and lock in. It looks like in a couple additional places. So this is probably gonna be even trickier. But I think I may have just found the secrets. There. If you keep pressure on these two pieces so that they stay in alignment, that has helped. Oh, you know what though? Oh, there we go. So I just need to get this, this in there. There. Not too bad if I do say so myself. All right, now you know what that noise is. Well, it sounds like the wife is having a smoothie. God, man, the immersion blender is killing me. All right, so we're gonna move this piece down and then we're gonna have to kind of, looks like make a little room here so that we can get to this armature. So that we can flip this whole piece around. Jeez, Louise, what is going on? And then flip this piece up, yes. And then on the back, we're going to pull this piece out and flip that little piece out there. Sorry, I went up there, it was actually a vacuum cleaner. So she was a little upset that I even asked her to bother stopping, so. All right, we wanna get this piece up and over. I am worried about what that just did to the paint, but hopefully nothing. And then we want to collapse this piece in. Make sure we're all clear. We want to bring this piece out, let's see, like that. And then according to the instructions, this just collapses. Okay, and that's kind of one of those masterpiece moments, I'd say. Uh, looks like that has to, oh, we'll deal with that later. Looks like this piece comes back up and clips into here. And then the foot forms the bottom of the gun and all of this stuff comes up. I don't know why that doesn't give me a warm feeling, but maybe it's just supposed to sit there and, and not necessarily plug in. All right, so I couldn't find any other additional information, so it looks like we're just kind of going to leave it there and sort it out later. All right, so let's take this piece out again, and we need to get this armature here from beyond this piece. In order to do so, we'll kind of lift up here, rotate this around, extend all of this, and get it out of the way. We want to lift this piece up. and rotate it over so that it's at like a perpendicular to where it was. And then we want to bring this piece out as well. Extend that little flap and sort of, oh, this one looks like it's tabbed in. So we're gonna get that out of there. And does that go down any further? I thought the other one went down a little further. Oh well, either way, it should clear. We're going to open this up here and fold that piece in. And then we're gonna bring this armature down and this piece out. And then we should be able to collapse that leg again. And I do like that an awful lot. And then we'll bring this foot back. Actually, that's a... Uh, Let's plug that back together. Bring this foot back, this piece down, this piece up, and that should hopefully be a guide. One other thing we wanna do now is lift these hammers out and get them uh, out of the way. I guess all this stuff's getting ready to line up. And it is, so we unclip this and we bring this whole armature around. And you'll see they meet there in the middle. 
and we'll deal with this later on this this does open up here but we'll deal with that in a bit and then we need to get these uh, these joints unplugged and good night there there's one Come on, girl. There it is. All right. And then it, all of this needs to tab together. Let's see what we got. What we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna pre-plan a little bit. We're gonna bring this up. Okay, you know me. I need points of reference. We're gonna fold this down. We're gonna spin this. 180 and hope that we can clear everything now we want this to kind of look like a shark's fin oh, my dad just showed up and everything so let's get these straightened out I gotta pause I gotta come back to this later he's coming over for lunch silly me thinking I could get it done all right I just figured it out and they're getting upset my wife's already come down once but look flip this up flip this up in this up straighten these out and you just want these down you have to spin them so that you got two sharks fins okay now make sure this is all lined up the best you can I'm guessing is going to help and we're gonna push in here you see that's starting to give and we're gonna bring the knees forward so that this sits in these channels and then we're going to tab all of this stuff around it so that this lines up. Now, this looks like it's going to be a bit of a nightmare, um, but I will get this off camera during lunch and I'll tell you any sort of uh, problems I have. There we go. Looks like I'm already starting to get it. Let's just do it now, shall we? Yeah. Right. I don't want to lose my patience, but... There we go. Got it. I'll be back. They're still here. But it looks like to me, if you get this straightened out, where this is all flush like it should be, if you bring this up and over, it should go into position for the most part. Now, on the other side, just to show you, like it's this panel that we're trying to line up. So we'll bring it down and then we'll bring this up. And it's a little trouble clearing that little hump right there but that should do it and that's the gun and I'll tell you um, I, oh wait we gotta rotate this down so that it looks like it makes sense and that's supposed to lock in there but I, I ain't got it working but I I tell you triggers for spring loaded uh, I don't like how panely it is, you know, and I, I don't know what I've done wrong that it seems to be like, you know, lopsided, like a little bit of a, like a slight frowny face, but it's a pretty rewarding process and it feels pretty accurate. I mean, this part is a little thick, but it feels pretty accurate in your, in your hand. I think all in all, they did a pretty good job, all things considered. And like I said, I'm pretty lenient when it comes to, uh, oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, yeah, that, that part's not great. But then you can cock the hammer back. Like, that's a nice little feature. So, yeah, pretty cool. Nice, nice, nice job. So, th there it is, complete. And I think it looks great. I have to admit, I've been drinking heavily at this point 
because my dad came down. You know what I mean? We had a nice little lunch, a little taco salad. It was fine. And I had some wine to go with it. And, you know, I'll be honest with you guys. I begged him. I begged him to be in a skit. Uh, you know, I felt like it was a perfect opportunity. But he said, Bob, I am a private person. And that was the end of it. But don't worry. I, I got a skit coming. But yeah, all in all, I must admit, it is pretty good. It's pretty rewarding. I wish this all didn't have any sort of, you know, worry or concern in terms of scratching the paint and stuff. But even still, I mean, I'm, I'm never going to transform them back. Yikes. Uh, I'll mess with that later. But yeah, it's not too terrible. And I'll tell you, the more uh, I mess with this, the kind of straighter I can get the gun. It's just kind of a, a matter of getting everything to tab in completely. But, you know, at the same time, you're trying to be careful because you don't want to damage it. But uh, it, it is fairly impressive. Um, it's it's the transformation is frustrating in, 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 a, in a couple of ways just because it's so complex. But it's not frustrating in the sense where, you know, you're, you're kind of asking the impossible. Like if you think of like some of the things that X Transbots asks you to do or you have to move pieces around other pieces, it's just an unnatural movement. It's not asking anything like that. It's just a matter of kind of keeping track of all the parts and accounting for them. That being said, I mean, even even with the, the level of, of intricacy that this has, uh, you got to be careful about the term frustrating because, I mean, we all agree we all know what the most frustrating thing in the world is. All right, I'll just open my new Dremel. And oh no. No one can open these vacuum sealed. Ugh. Human strength won't do it. God. Why would anyone design this like this? It's just, ah, cut my finger. When your only tool is a hammer, Every job looks like a nail. Ugh! This little piece won't help. So I got him back and I got him back and I'm pretty well intoxicated. This is a first for Sculpey's reviews. We're gonna go through a paint check after a transformation, but I wanna make sure that I say he's not broken. I was able, me, me, of all people, was able to get him to gun mode and back without breaking him and getting him from gun mode back i'm intoxicated to say the least let's make some noise for me let's make some noise for me being able to do that so let's do a quick paint check top to bottom okay i have the smallest scuff right here and i did it with this damaged head i also used the damaged chest just in case anything went wrong because i'm not going to be displaying them this way nothing the shoulders, I got two scuff marks right there. You see them? One, two, actually there's another one there. Three. Other shoulder, one scuff mark on the forearm right there. Another one, real faint one right there. On the back, clean as a whistle. The pelvis, I actually have a little scuff mark on two places. There, can you see it? Just ever so slight in there. I don't think you'd be able to see it if it wasn't under these harsh lights, but it's still worth noting, right? For the legs, I have two on his right thigh right there. One, two. So a couple scuff marks along the way, and that's under... Um, that's that's for a first transformation. You know, I, I really wanted to do that to show what could possibly be done with me. And I'm not the transformation guru, you know, um, what damage to expect after one transformation of a guy that's in the, you know, at, at least in the to be f at least fair in the mediocre realm of, of efficiency regarding this kind of stuff. So expect a couple scuff marks. You could probably do slightly better than me. You could probably do slightly worse than me. But overall, nothing hateful. Final thoughts. Let's talk about the negatives. Unfortunately, it has to be said that I think you would find it very difficult to transform this guy to gun and back without noticing some paint issues. I think we also need to say those paint issues may be minor. 
They may indeed be minor as mine were, I feel like. If you don't feel like mine were minor, uh, I'm not sure what to tell you. But at, at any rate, I think we should expect some paint issues if we're going to follow through with the transformation. Now, that is an issue. I think there's something that needs to be said for that because I don't know why I can't mess with that thumb. I want that thumb out. Why can't I get that thumb out, Mac? I think we need to talk about that a bit because the paint is a big part of the sale for this guy for me and it is very difficult to achieve the transformation without damaging the paint. Let's talk about other issues. I don't like the way they did the hands. I don't like the fact that the hands slide out and then the weapons slide in. I've actually had the hands slide out on me while I was manipulating them, uh, which is something I don't feel like should be happening. The transformation is a bear, but I think we should expect for transformations to be a bear when it comes to any masterpiece style of Megatron. I don't know if I've dealt with one that was just easy come, easy go. And lastly, I don't think the gun looks that great. To be fair, it's a lot of work to get there, and I don't think the gun doesn't, you know, a fantastic job of looking like a gun. It kind of looks like a puzzle, you know, that was turned into a gun, or a gun-shaped puzzle, I suppose. Which, in all fairness, it is. But let's be fair, it shouldn't look that way. And lastly, the back kibble, which to me isn't a big deal, but I think should be noted that it is unsightly. But the positives, and there are plenty. The paint is beautiful. Yes, it is going to get damaged throughout the transformation process, but it is applied everywhere. It is applied liberally. It is applied well, and it looks breathtaking. We do have a number of bells and whistles. We have a great selection of accessories. We have electronics. We have translucent plastics. We have paint. We have die cast. We have all the kind of things that we have, I think, collectively agreed upon that we want from a collector grade Megatron or a collector grade transformer, period. The articulation is pretty much perfect. The sculpt is on the money. It may not look as great to some as it does to others, but it doesn't mean that it's any less Megatron. The super cartoon route is definitely the route that they're going, and as a result of transformation, we do get a little extra panel work, like down there in the legs and so forth, and on the side of the legs, which does make it look a little bit more interesting, and I do prefer it. I think that this does it fairly well. Not to say that it's a perfect blend nor a perfect balance, but to say that it does a good job of kind of satisfying the fans, satisfying the G1 cartoon fans, and satisfying kind of the masterpiece collector fans. My biggest complaint aesthetically is really the arms. I think that the, the forearms look a little shoddy, they look a little choppy, they look a little... You know, people are complaining about the shoulders, I mean, about the back, but I think the arms are the biggest issue. And to be fair, the arms are the biggest cumbersome element of the transformation. So I think all of that stuff um, really resides in that engineering. But to continue on with positives, I think the materials and the hardware is fantastic. The only thing that I wish they would have done was have outward ratchets, but I know that people are all bent out of shape about outward ratchets now. And they're, <laughs> but I don't want them. I don't want them going outward because in the A stance it's too wide. I'd rather a wider A stance than a floppy leg joint. That's me. That's how I roll. You may not feel the same way, and that's cool, buddy. I don't knock you. You shouldn't knock me. But I probably will knock you, and you probably will knock me. Let's get real. And the one thing I want to talk about before we back out of here is the price. It's expensive. I'm not sure it's worth the price. I think, to be fair, it is worth the import price, the 180 price point. My buddy, Greg, God bless him. I love him dearly. But he's always, you know, s s singing the song of, well, it's 180. It's not really 230. You're paying the American markup, so you really can't hold it to that standard. But I disagree because I'm holding it to the same standard that I've hold held every previous masterpiece, and that is to the American price point standard. Therefore, the American price point standard should be held consistent amongst the line. Do I feel like size swipe was worth $80 or whatever it was? Absolutely. But if I were to take size swipe and add an additional $150, I'm not sure that this sings that. That being said, I do feel it is probably the best Megatron available. That's not to say that it's the best across the board. Let me talk about that real quick. So I think that Apollyon still has a very striking presence. I don't have him to show here. I actually have him. I just don't have him handy. I don't have him to show here, but I think Apollyon still has a very striking presence. He might have the most striking presence. I think that Make Toys is probably the best built. I think that DX9s with the, or was it, was it, what was it? Unique Toys DX9, whatever it was, Mitron, 
has kind of the most interesting engineering, except for the part where the barrel plugs in that's causing so many people to break theirs. But I think that DX9 also finds an interesting balance between the G1 toy with that silver blend and also the G1 cartoon. And what I think this does the best is capture the G1 cartoon. I know the engineering is gonna be stressful for people. I know the transformation is gonna be stressful for people. Hell, it was stressful for me, but it's doable. It's achievable, and as you can see, it's achievable without breaking it. And I'm a guy that breaks stuff. I'm a guy that's heavy-handed. I mean, look at these things. Look at my size of my hand next to Megatron. Like, I have a, I'm a heavy-handed dude by nature. Like, I can't help it. It's, it's, at some point, it's just genetics. And I was able to get him back and forth with, I would feel, a minimal amount of damage. However, that is to say, there is still damage, and that shouldn't be acceptable. The parts that are going to rub against one another should definitely have been taken into account and been adjusted accordingly however i will say that i don't know if anybody else has done this i don't watch a lot of people's uh, reviews i especially don't watch a whole lot of transformer reviews but i don't know if anybody else has done this but i did it with the damaged chest and the damaged face and i didn't have any problem i would recommend if you were planning on displaying him with the straight chest and straight face that you too transform him with the damaged chest and damaged face as to just save any possible wear and tear on pieces that you admit that you eventually end up displaying i think this is a very interesting piece i think it's a a very intricate piece and i i ultimately recommend it that's not to say i think it's perfect but it is to say i think it's pretty good before I leave, I want to comment on the proportions. So this is where, this is why I made sure to put out my masterpiece uh, discussion videos prior to this. The proportions on this guy are pretty much spot on to the cartoon. I will say also that it feels better in hand than it both looks in video and views in pictures. Not unsimilar, dissimilar not similar different than not sure what the wording is i've been putting in work but ultimately not different than grinder which i feel like photographs much more poorly than he ultimately looks but if you look at his pants that are up too high and you look at his head which may appear too big it's all fairly cartoon accurate and that continues in the trend that they've been going now had we seen this toy come out five years ago six years ago Maybe we would have seen a Megatron where the proportions didn't kind of leave us a bit unsettled as these kind of leave some of us. But as a result, this is the direction they're heading. The good news is, is within that direction, I think they found a pretty good blend here between an interesting aesthetic and a G1 consistency. That being said, I do recommend it. It is pricey. Just bite the bullet and get over it. Unless you're happy with the, the current Megatron you have. As always, if you like it, you win. But I think there is something about this Megatron that captures the character. And I have to admit, I do enjoy the gray over the silver. It just strikes me more as Megatron. You can make the argument that the silver is more indicative of the toy, that it, the silver is what the cartoon was trying to capture. And I would agree with all those statements, but I would tell you, it still doesn't seem like silver is the right choice. So yeah, I think it's a pretty good piece. Not without its faults. Those faults mainly being that it doesn't survive transformation completely intact. And that's a significant issue. You just have to decide whether or not that issue is significant enough for you to buy it or not. For me, it is. For you, it may not be. Act accordingly. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.